Hello, I'm JW. Uh, today we've got this power supply here. Now this is actually from some LED lighting and it's supposed to be the uh, 240 volts goes in that socket on the end there, just the two connections. And we're supposed to get 12 volts DC out of this, but unfortunately it no longer works. So though uh, we can shove power in there, absolutely nothing comes out of this end. So let's uh, take this thing apart, see how it's made inside and hopefully find out actually what's gone wrong with it. Now here's the supply here, it's just got one of those sort of figure of eight type connections on the end here, and that's just your uh, main input, so 100 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz, so one of the sort of universal type things. And so we're supposed to get 12 volts DC here, and as we see there it's supposed to be uh, 12 volts up to uh, 2.5 amps. Now uh, this particular item was fitted to some LED lighting, and this was only fitted last year, which uh, was 2015. And uh, having just looked at this, and it's on the side here, it's got this label, which uh, might not be easy to see, but uh, basically the label actually says 2009, so we're not entirely clear why that would be, because so the uh, lighting that this came with was actually only installed last year, so obviously it's either been in stock a long time or this is actually just a label that's incorrect. Now, uh, so you can put mains in here, it doesn't uh, blow the fuse or anything, it takes the power fine, but no current is used and absolutely nothing comes out on these here, so no voltage whatsoever, so clearly something has failed internally. Now no visible screws, so let's just see what's concealed under this label, if anything. And the answer is absolutely nothing, so that is simply just a label which uh, covers nothing at all. So. Presumably this has been uh, glued or welded shut, so uh, some additional method of opening may be necessary. Let's see if we can just cut along the sides of this knife. Now, first of all, here's the lid of the thing. There's the uh, other side of the label, so nothing there. But on this side, we've got this sort of uh, sticky deposit, which is uh, on the inside. So uh, not totally clear what that is. And in terms of the positioning, I mean, obviously that was located here. So it's actually around where the main input socket is. And then we've got this uh, small inductor here. And obviously a diode's there, so uh, it's not totally clear what that actually is. It doesn't appear to have leaked out of anything because so there's nothing really on this side which has leaked at all. So the still uh, looks to be intact, as do the others. So uh, I'd say no idea what that uh, would be, and I say it's only on the bottom plate. It doesn't actually extend up the side of the container at all. So uh, yeah, something of a mystery there, and I say it's fairly tacky as if it's some sort of adhesive or something, but so there's nothing on this side that uh, would correspond uh, with that. So anyway, there's the uh, first mystery. So inside then, fairly uh, standard looking sort of switching power supply, so uh, mains power in here. There's to be a uh, fuse here, which may well be uh, what's blown, and uh, four diodes there, presumably the bridge rectifier. Capacitor, which uh, let's have a look there, that's uh, 22 microfarads at uh, 400 volts, so and that seems reasonable. FEC, whoever they might be, and uh, main transformer here, it's quite a large one, but bearing in mind this is a 2.5 amp output, so it has to deal with a reasonably high amount of power there. And uh, a couple of other devices here with their own individual heat sinks, so one here and one over there. A couple more capacitors which have uh, gold writing on them. Those are uh, TOCON apparently, so uh, 1000 microfarad 16 volts and 470 at 16 volts as well. A little uh, transistor presumably down there, and again the uh, main transformer in the middle. Now there's nothing obvious on here, it seems to be burnt or destroyed, and uh, so all the capacitors seem to be intact there. And nothing that seems to be grossly sort of burnt or uh, overheated. A bit of uh, sort of heatsink 
on the back of the uh, device here. Screw may be a bit discoloured, but that also might just be a bit of locking paste or compound instead. So, yeah, nothing uh, desperately obvious. And uh, other than that, all seems to be fairly well intact. Here's the uh, back of the board there. So there's some bits of uh, probably uh, soldering residue and whatever on the back, but again, there's nothing that's uh, immediately obvious is totally destroyed. A lot of various uh, service mount uh, resistors and things on the back here, but again, they're not the sort of things you would expect to cause a catastrophic failure and a uh, small uh, six pin device down in there. So let's just check this uh, fuse here for a start and say so they have actually uh, provided a fuse which is uh, quite nice so uh, continuity there and we have continuity there as well so uh, clearly not the fuse on the input as that's uh, completely intact and say so there's nothing else obvious on here which uh, looks to be burnt or destroyed so I'll just have a closer look at this board and so there's the fuse on the input which has not blown so uh, clearly that's definitely not the thing and uh, if you look across this board it uh, looks for all the world like it's suffered from some kind of liquid damage because on the back here you can see there's some sort of uh, residue there of something or other that's uh, like spilled on there we seem to have some kind of corrosion around these pins on the diodes there and uh, again if we have a look at the other areas you can see that presumably there's flux or residue on that one but uh, say so as we look over the rest here again on this corner we've got this uh, sort of brownish uh, kind of mess there and again not too bad over the other side and if we have another look on the uh, main or the component side here you can see around the bottom of the transformer there there's some sort of uh, what looks like corrosion and then on the pins here this uh, be optocoupler or something there's definite corrosion on both of the legs there and also uh, to a lesser extent on the other side so not entirely clear how that would have happened so bearing in mind this has been in a sealed plastic case and hasn't actually been anywhere wet or uh, even moist so certainly a bit of a mystery there that's the uh, two DC output wires there uh, so if you look around there you can see the top of the uh, transistor there or output drive and you've got the uh, tab in the bottom there which again has that sort of edge of uh, what looks like rust on it and again this side of the transformer there some sort of uh, residue there and also on the side here and then back to the uh, main input side there I've just done a few uh, checks on this and uh, all of the uh, components test out just as you would expect all the uh, diodes this uh, thing here though it's excessively corroded there it does test as correct on uh, both sides the uh, larger capacitors test okay still got continuity on the transformer though that doesn't rule out the possibility of some internal short and the uh, two other devices here here and uh, well this one as well uh, Again, all test uh, as sort of non-shorted and not open. And the other thing that tests wrong is this capacitor here on the side, which uh, basically is uh, going to the label. It's supposed to be a 10 microfarad at 50 volts. Yeah, let's see the pins just come through the back there. But uh, unfortunately, it tests as uh, defective. So just bring in the uh, meter there, and we can just press onto the pins there. And we've got open circuit or low capacitance, which clearly is uh, not what we want. So we'll uh, just remove that. And then uh, see if we can just stick in a replacement. Now, capacitor measurements are not uh, necessarily going to be 100% accurate on a board because obviously you've got other components in the circuit. However, the fact it's testing is open is uh, not a good start because obviously. Uh, even if there were other components in series, it would have tested as either shorted or some other sort of resistance there. So uh, testing open, definitely not what we want. 
So I'll just reflow some solder onto the uh, terminals there. And then we can uh, heat those and remove the uh, fending component. Now let's just set it uh, off of the board. So clip on with the two wires there. And it's still saying open or low capacitance, so uh, it certainly will appear that this is the defective deal. And dare uh, say a bit difficult to see there, but maybe on the bottom there's a sort of a brown deposit there of uh, something or other. So it doesn't appear to be uh, blown or destroyed, but nevertheless uh, it's clearly not registering as a uh, 10 microfarad or in fact uh, anything else. So. Yeah, open or low. So uh, clearly not the uh, reading we should be getting. And you can just about see the writing there. It's uh, supposed to be 10 microfarads at 50 volts and uh, 105 rated. Now I've got a replacement one here. It's similar size in physical size. As you can see it's uh, reasonably fine. And uh, 10 microfarads obviously on the side there. This is actually 100 volts but that doesn't matter because obviously we only wanted a 50 so if you're replacing capacitor then doesn't matter as long as the voltage rating is at least what it should be on that one so of course 100 is a lot more than 50 and uh, it's also a uh, 105 rated as well. So I just need to clean off these pads so just uh, put some uh, flux there from this uh, apparently rather empty pen. And I'll just use the wick here to uh, soak up whatever's on there. So it's uh, reasonably clean there with the uh, two holes. And I'll just need to replace the uh, capacitor with the new one here. I'll see, making sure it's not the uh, busted old one. And it is actually marked on the board here with the negative side and the positive. Obviously, if it wasn't, we'd have to make sure before installing it. So uh, I just want to just slot that into the holes. And then we can simply solder the two terminals on the back. So I'll just put some. Uh, the uh, flux in there. The solder has flux in it of course but let's just put some on the uh, terminals there for good measure. Those capacitors have been in the drawer for quite a while so maybe a bit of corrosion on the leads. And then we just go in and uh, solder those two into position. Well, that's reasonable. It's somewhat difficult to solder under a uh, camera, so uh, let's just trim those away. Like so. Just uh, brush away whatever's left, so. Good enough. So let's just see if it works. Uh, get some uh, different test leads here so we can attach to the wires without actually touching them. So I just want to connect onto the uh, output there. And of course the output here. Now we're going to set this to this uh, low impedance output so it puts a certain amount of load on this thing because the other one that measures voltage, it's such a high input it may uh, 
to see that there's actually no output load and uh, not actually turn on, so obviously something we would like to avoid. So I've got some, uh, just a figure eight lead here, let's see what uh, we get. So there we go, 12.5 volts, uh, seems a bit on the high side, but bearing in mind though this is a low impedance, it's not actually uh, much of a load in terms of the uh, output, but uh, nevertheless that uh, now works once again. And uh, let's just see what it would do on the, because uh, it's holding that quite a while because of the uh, output capacitor, and there it goes, just uh, dropping away to nothing. Just see what it would actually do on the uh, normal voltage input there. It's still a little uh, residual voltage, so plug it in. Oh yeah, it seems to work just as well on the uh, normal sort of 10 mega ohm input variety. So uh, just remove that and you'll see that uh, that'll probably hold there for a considerable time as this is basically putting next to no load on there. And there it goes, uh, slowly reducing back down to zero. So that's uh, successfully repaired and uh, one crappy little capacitor causing the problem, which uh, obviously is just uh, failed due to age or whatever. And uh, not entirely clear what all that corrosion on the board was about because uh, it's not been exposed to any moisture or why. In fact, the label said 2009 when that was actually only uh, purchased and installed last year, which was 2015. But uh, anyway, the mysteries of electrical items. And uh, that uh, can now be used, so they will have to glue the case back together, of course. I'd have to uh, basically cut along the seam to get the thing open. And uh, that may not be the best soldering job in the world, because uh, first of all, it was done under the actual camera, which is extremely difficult. If you've not tried it, then uh, please go and have a go, because soldering under a camera is far more difficult than you might imagine, as you can only see in one dimension. And also that was uh, disgusting lead-free solder of the uh, type which is uh, rather difficult to use compared to the leaded variety. But nevertheless, uh, did the job and uh, this piece of junk can now be thrown away. So until next time, thanks for watching.